Naughty Dog just gave us a bunch of information about the PC version of The Last of Us Part Two Remastered. It's arriving on April 3rd, and uh, before we get into the system requirements, I want to highlight a couple of interesting and I don't necessarily think great things uh, that I'm noticing in the PC feature support. Notice how this reads. NVIDIA DLSS 3 Super Resolution support AMD FSR 3.1 and FSR 4 support with upscaling and frame generation. It would be easy to breeze by this, but notice that with FSR 4, they're saying and frame generation, not just upscaling. Whereas with DLSS, they're specifically saying super resolution support. That would be the upscaling. So as this reads, it sounds like this game might feature FSR frame generation, but not DLSS frame generation. Now, AMD and NVIDIA have made all of this a little more complicated to parse based on branding frame generation and upscaling under the same headings as DLSS and FSR, despite frame generation and upscaling not at all being the same things. Uh, but again, as that reads, it seems like FSR frame generation confirmed, DLSS frame generation being specifically and explicitly left out. Interesting. Now, before you're too upset on an NVIDIA GPU, uh, you should still be able to use DLSS super resolution and FSR frame generation because as of the FSR 3.1 update, AMD did decouple the frame generation from the upscaling pathway. So as long as the game has implemented their UI properly, it should allow you to uh, mix and match the upscaler with the frame generation. But that doesn't excuse the fact that if it really doesn't have DLSS frame generation support, but does have AMDs, I kind of question that choice for development. Seems, seems a bit odd, and I'd question it the other way around as well. I think that these are main features that PC gamers expect, and they should support it from both brands. Nice to see FSR 4 support explicitly called out here, though. Uh, that's definitely good to see for uh, AMD GPU users on the new 9000 series. Uh, anyway, they're just going into some stuff about uncapped frame rates and whatnot, which is good to see, but you know, not every PC release uh, does have uncapped frame rate when it's coming from the consoles. You know, it's these things like Elden Ring that lock you to 60 FPS, so it's good to at least see that's available. They also mentioned direct storage support, which can be a good thing, but I've actually seen some games with direct storage support not perform super well in certain situations where I'm curious if doing GPU decompression is actually impacting performance in a negative way, so we'll have to see how that plays out here. The other main PC features I think worth calling out is that they are explicitly calling out support for not only 21 by nine aspect ratios, but also 32 by nine and even 48 by nine resolutions with compatibility for triple monitor uh, setups, et cetera. So they are showing that on the PC version, you can get a super ultra wide experience, which is cool. Not every game supports that natively. So that's good. They also call out, uh, you know, remappable controls, dual sense controller support. Uh, all of that good stuff. Now, let's get into the PC specs. So this does seem to be a pretty good chart as far as letting us know how things will go, as long as performance actually lines up with this. If you're interested in me benchmarking this game when it comes out, go ahead and let, let me know in the comment section. I also generally use my PC system requirements videos uh, kind of view count to decide whether benchmarking a game is worthwhile because that's a much bigger time investment. Uh, so if not a lot of people are watching the system requirements, I'm gonna assume there's not a lot of interest in benchmarking, but you can also let me know in the comment section. Now, uh, notice that they've broken this out as the graphic setting, resolution, and frame rate that you will hit with certain hardware. That's great, because some of these charts still don't do that, which is incredibly frustrating. Now, that doesn't always guarantee that these charts end up being accurate, <laughs> uh, but at least there's that. Now, this is saying that to play the game at low settings 720p 30fps, they are only asking for a GTX 1650 or a Radeon RX 5500 XT. That is not a big ask. Like, uh, if we go to the GTX 1650, uh, that's a four gigabyte GPU from back on uh, April 23rd of 2019, but as a 50 class GPU, this is at definitely at the lower end of the spectrum. Its launch price was 150 bucks. So they're not asking for that much here to get in the door. Um, now, if your GPU isn't one of the ones they mention, 
Uh, I will link this in the video description. This is Tech Power Up's relative performance chart. To be clear, this does not necessarily line up with the performance you will see in this particular game. This is more like ballpark average figures, and some games perform better or worse on certain GPU architectures than others, but this should give you a general idea. Uh, if the 1650 gets you 720p 30fps low settings, then we would expect cards like an RX 6400, an ARC A380, although sometimes Intel over or underperforms in various games, uh, you know, an Radeon RX 470. These types of cards would be similar. And if we scroll up to more powerful cards, like a GTX 970, if it has enough VRAM, um, that, that kind of a situation, uh, GTX 1060 is actually more powerful than what they're listing here. So again, you can kind of get an idea of what you would expect. That being said, these system requirements charts do not mention anything about a use of upscaling to produce these numbers. However, I certainly have seen system requirements charts that are actually including upscaling for these frame rate targets, but they don't explicitly state that in the chart. So without benchmarking the game myself, that's, I'm just gonna have to leave that as an unknown. It's not saying it's using upscaling, it's saying it's using the low preset, but in some games, the low preset includes upscaling, so hopefully it doesn't, but I do just have to mention that that is always a caveat when reading these charts. 16 gigabytes of RAM, Windows 10 or 11, storage 150 gigabyte SSD. Notice it does say SSD, it does not say hard drives are supported. Some games that say SSD required actually end up running okay on a hard drive, but that's not always the case, so do keep that in mind. Also 150 gigabytes, that's a big download. <laughs> um, the CPU is also not super demanding here. Uh, they're only asking for an Intel Core i3 8100 or a Ryzen 3 1300X. If we pop into the, uh, uh, the Tech Power Up database on that, the Core i3-8100 is only a four core, four threads uh, part. And from a while back, it looks like this launched in October of 2017 for a little over a hundred bucks. So low end CPU from 2017. Um, again, not asking too much to get in the door. Uh, and the AMD Ryzen 3 1300X, again, four core, four thread part. Uh, this one came out in July of 2017. So that's all they're asking to get in the door. Seems like not a lot, but again, they're saying low settings 720p 30. And, you know, sometimes we're averaging 30, maybe, you know, maybe you do dip under that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. Now, if you want to play the game medium settings 1080p 60fps, that's your recommended setup. They're asking for uh, the GPU to be an RTX 3060 or a Radeon RX 5700. These are in the same ballpark, even if they're not identical in performance in most games. And again, performance can vary a bit game by game. Um, so how, how does that scale up from the GTX 1650 we were looking at? Well, if we pop back over to the uh, relative performance chart, if we keep the 1650 set as that 100% baseline and we keep, keep scrolling through, maybe you'll spot your GPU somewhere here in between. Uh, but we're trying to get all the way up to an RTX 3060. So I gotta keep going quite a bit. Notice the RTX 3060 is more than twice the performance, 2.35 times the performance. Now, I like that because that means that this actually makes sense. To scale from 30 FPS to 60 FPS, you would expect to double performance, and to in go up from low settings to medium settings, you would expect some additional performance increase. We're also going from 720p to 1080p, which would also be an additional performance increase. So the scaling here being more than double the performance does seem to be in line uh, with the types of settings, resolutions, and frame rates they're describing here. Although generally on these types of charts, 30 and 60 don't mean exactly 30 and exactly 30, 60, they mean that general ballpark. Uh, so maybe it's really 40 and 65, or you know, 40 and 58, or something, you know, it can be that kind of thing too. Anyway, uh, the AMD GPU here is the RX 5700. And so the RX 5700, well, let's click on the 3060 as the baseline. By the way, they didn't specify if it was the 12 gigabyte 3060 or the eight gigabyte 3060. I'm gonna assume it's the 12 gigabyte version unless stated otherwise, since that was the original product, but there is a different version that's less powerful and has less VRAM. Uh, the RX 5700 um, as uh, compared to the 3060 12 gigabyte on this particular 
uh, list is within 10% of the performance. So again, that's similar ballpark since, like I said, these are generally not exact FPS numbers, they're general ballpark. So these seem to be roughly in line with each other, makes sense. They're keeping it 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And they're saying to go up from 30 FPS to 60 FPS. Generally, graphic settings don't have a big impact on the CPU, and neither does resolution. They can have small impacts depending on certain things. But usually, your, your CPU can kind of set a max frame rate your game can hit, regardless of the GPU power. So um, to go from the uh, 30 FPS settings here to the 60 FPS settings, notice they are going up from an i3 to an i5, but staying in that same generation of CPU. Uh, on the AMD side of things, they took a bigger jump going from the Ryzen 3 1300X to the Ryzen 5 3600. A Ryzen 5 3600 in many games is similar performance to the CPU in the PlayStation 5, although not in every game. It's the general ballpark, though. And considering this game, um, Last of Us Part II Remastered, has a PS5 version running at 60 FPS+, plus, that all seems to make sense to me. Uh, uh, if we want to look at those CPUs a bit, again, the Core i5-8600 is now jumping to 6-core, six 6-thread, six although we're still from that same uh, 8000 series generation, so this was a February 2018 part that came out at 200 bucks, but that was seven years ago. Uh, the Ryzen 5 3600 is 6-core, 12-thread part, and this is a bit newer in July of 2019, coming in around that $200 price point, but again, still about six-year-old kind of mid-range part. Now, uh, they're saying for the high settings, staying at 60 FPS, but going up from medium settings to high and from 1080p to 1440p. So we would expect um, a, a GPU increase to increase the resolution as well as the graphic settings. They're suggesting going from an RTX 3060 to an RTX 3070. Notice the 3070 is an eight gigabyte graphics card. And so, that is indicating that the high settings at 1440p probably are okay on an eight gigabyte graphics card. Again, have to benchmark the game myself to be sure. The original The Last of Us uh, PC re uh, version was heavy on the VRAM at the highest settings. So, uh, but I think usually when you did turn down to high instead of ultra or whatever they called it, maybe they called it very high in that game, uh, then the uh, eight gigabytes tended to be okay. So um, uh, if I'm remembering that correctly, it's been a while since I benchmarked that. So anyway, something to keep an eye on. Uh, the AMD GPU there is the RX 6800. If we scale up the relative performance chart, again, if we leave the 3060 as the baseline, again, maybe you'll spot your GPU somewhere here in between, they're saying to go up to 1440p high settings, we've got to go up to the 3070. Uh, that's about a 50% uh, performance increase that they're asking for there. Well, we're going from uh, for 1080p to 1440p, a 50% increase actually makes a lot of sense there. Also going from medium to high. Uh, this seems in the line of, the, uh, of realistic uh, uh, performance demands, especially since the 60 here and the 60 here might not actually be exactly 60, right? These could be uh, slightly different. It's usually just kind of a rough ballpark. The RX 6800 is in the general ballpark of the 3070 performance. It's generally a little bit better, uh, but uh, when you're not ray tracing. Here they've got them within 10% of each other. Um, it has a lot more VRAM, but in situations where the 3070 isn't running out of VRAM and we're not ray tracing, again, similar ballpark. 6800 is usually a little faster, but nothing um, to push you from like 60 to 120 or you know, out of this general tier. They're also increasing the CPU here to the i7-9700K and Ryzen 7 3700X. That's really staying fairly similar, but increasing the core count a little bit. Um, but since we're staying at 60 FPS, I, I have a feeling that if, if these could deliver 60 FPS, these probably can too. It's probably not a real big difference here. The 9700K is eight core, eight thread. And from the follow-up generation to the 8000 series, October 2018, uh, they, they supported the same motherboards. They uh, had very similar gaming performance generationally. So that's that. Uh, the 3700X from AMD, again, this is jumping to 8-core 16-thread from the 3600 6-core 12-thread, but we're within the same generation of part. This was a July 2019 chip. Now, uh, once we get to, if you want to play at 4K very high, which as Nixie's ports go, and this does have the Nixie's logo on it, that generally is the highest setting available in their games. 
they're saying 4K 60, so 4K max settings, asking for a 4080 or a 7900 XT. They're also jumping up the processor demands. That seems odd, because like I said, usually graphic settings and uh, resolution don't have a major impact on CPU performance other than ray tracing. And I don't think this game has ray tracing because there's a lot of baked lighting and things like that. So there's that. Anyway, they're calling for the GPUs to be at RTX 4080 and 7900 XT. That's another reason I wouldn't expect this to be including ray tracing because these would generally only be in the same tier if you're not using ray tracing. Usually the 4080 is a bit more powerful than the 7900 XT, but not wildly so. So if we go up and look at, okay, we're going from 1440p60 uh, with an RTX 3070, and then we want to go up to 4K, which is a lot more pixels, and uh, also increasing the graphic settings a bit, uh, we have to go up to the 4080. That's almost doubling the performance. But considering we're uh, increasing the pixel count all the way up to 4K, as well as the graphics increase, again, that sounds fairly reasonable. Now, if I set the 4080 as the baseline, uh, then the 7900 XT that they were listing there um, is, again, within 12%. It's generally slower than the 4080, but we're not talking so, so much wildly so uh, that it's unreasonable to say that they'd both be giving you a similar uh, frame rate here. Uh, they're also asking for 32 gigabytes of RAM now. Curious if that's actually necessary. Sometimes in system requirements charts, the CPU and RAM stuff increases when they just test out a higher end system, whether or not those things are actually needed and maybe it's just the GPU that's actually needed. That is most of the information that we had here. They are also mentioning uh, adding some new characters to the uh, roguelite version of the game called No Return, which I haven't played yet. I'll be interested in maybe trying that out. They've got different play styles to what was currently available. The PS5 version of the game will have those characters added with a 2.0 update as well, uh, which you could then unlock through in-game points, uh, if I'm understanding the notes here correctly. And the last thing that they mention here I think is worth pointing out, which is that PlayStation Network account requirements have been controversial on uh, the most recent PlayStation PC ports. However, they are saying that the PlayStation Network account is not required here. So they are saying that it will support PlayStation Overlay and PSN trophies with an optional account for PlayStation Network login. They're saying, while not required, those on PC who do sign in with their account for PlayStation Network will also gain access to 50 in-game points to activate bonus features, as well as a new skin for Ellie featuring Jordan A. Moon's, uh, Moon's jacket. I think that's actually the thing that you can unlock on the PS5 version. Um, maybe the characters are automatically added. Anyway, uh, but the point is, uh, regarding the PlayStation Network login, so this is... Um, I, I think this is good. What I'm curious about though is if they've solved the issue of just not selling the game in locations where you can't log into the PSN. Because it's good that they're no longer making the login required, but one of the main problems with the PSN login, not the only problem, but one of the main problems was that they wouldn't sell the games in regions where you couldn't log into the PlayStation Network, which is a lot of regions. <laughs> so hopefully the game is actually for sale in those regions. We'll have to find out. Um, here's the skin they're talking about as the incentive to sign into PSN. Uh, and yeah, they're saying that's what you can unlock in the PS5 version of the game. Anyway, all right, that's what I've got for you guys today. Hopefully you found the video useful and or interesting. Like I said, judging by the comments and how many views this gets, I'll decide whether it makes sense to benchmark this game when it comes out. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.